So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce everyone uh, to Alyssa Nassanja. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you going? Hello. So I just wanted to ask you both, where do you begin when starting your bathroom process? So I think the biggest thing that people need to know when starting the bathroom process is really defining your brief really hone in on your style because that's where confusion sets in. If you're unsure, if, if you're doing just a bathroom by itself, you really need to consider the rest of the rooms in your home as well because you do have to have that continuity. And if you're a little bit confused with style, take the time, really research, mood board, just put it all out on a table. So I mean, it's never been good. easier with Pinterest and... Instagram and to kind of take little snips of what you like and start putting them together and you'll start to figure out what you really do like and what you don't like and that's definitely going to help you achieve I guess the hone in on what style I guess you like. So I, I can be quite indecisive and I think I start out and I say I'm gonna I'm gonna go with gunmetal and then I look at my Pinterest board and all of a sudden I've got gold tapware everywhere. Yeah. So that that brief, I guess that vision board is so integral because that's what you set out from, but you can deviate at some points, can't you? And it's fine to deviate, it's a natural progression. Um, we certainly do. We might have a vision in our head when we're working on our own projects or client projects, and it definitely evolves. So don't, don't be scared, oh, I had you know, gunmetal grey in my head and now I've decided to go black because X, Y, Z. That's fine. You just really need to come back to your vision, your mood board, and say, okay, does this fit with the rest of my house? And is this something that I like or that potentially I've seen on the block and now I've changed my mind? And you'll soon be able to tell once you have your, your tiles and your tapware kind of physically together whether they kind of marry in to each other. So just be open to it. Yeah, just be open and don't put too much pressure on that. You have to get it right, you know, at the very start. All right, well, let's talk about what you're all doing, and that's creating a bathroom for potentially you or potentially your family. And I guess what we wanted to do is really unpack the different needs for different users. How would you approach, I guess, creating a master ensuite? Like, what are the details that you would put into it? So I guess what you have to consider when appro um, approaching any space is how you plan on using it. And we've obviously all got different scenarios. Somebody might want to design it and then with the intention of selling it in a couple years you might be designing a space that you want to live in for the next 20 years so that really you have to ask yourself that question and if it's designing for yourself you need to ask yourself how you plan on using it do you want to share a double basin with your husband well you wouldn't be sharing then would you <laughs> do you want a double shower um, and then obviously with your family bathroom you have to put a bath in it regardless of whether you're going to actually use it for resale, there's things that you really have to put in to get your money back down the track. I think some people get caught away with picking all the pretty things first and going and making all the tile selections and the tapware and, and all of those selections, whereas the, the first thing that needs to be done is actually getting the functionality aspect right. So spend the time on making sure that the layout is right, because if you don't get that right, then you're going to be stuck with a bathroom that is unfunctional and you've gone and just you know dropped a lot of money and using the 3D re um, the 3D mm, um, planner. planner through the Reese website is I mean we use that for our jobs so if we're a little bit unsure or we want to just see how the proportions work it's so good like you can just drop in a product of theirs and it will give you the exact dimensions the exact scale and and it will feel right or it won't feel right and if you're not sure as well because Yes, we can talk about honing in on your style, your trends, all of that. But layout and positioning is, you have to get it right. And if you're not sure, take the time, find a, a bare space on the ground and mark it out in tape and play around until it feels right. You know when it feels right, you'll get this feeling here. And if it's not right, you'll know. Just keep playing and persisting and don't settle for the layout. Really quickly, I want to talk about getting um, getting old, and we know uh, it's it's something that we kind of dance Ugh. around a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but um, well, Sandra said to me behind stage, she goes, "You're you're starting to look really old." <laughs> so she I said that to me earlier today, so I thought I'd better, I had to pay you back. 
Well, um, getting old is something that we don't really talk about, but at Reese, um, whenever we have customers coming in, we're always talking about, like, it's not a bathroom for five years, especially. It's, it's such a huge project, and it's got to accommodate you in the years to come. But what I didn't want to get caught up on was, the, I guess, like, the clinical side of, of um, creating a bathroom for the future and just thinking about how you can have really great integrated products but also design to, to help with that. Look, absolutely. I think that having the, the seat in the shower, I mean, we're, we're even doing that for clients that are, you know, fairly young just because it's so practical to sit there and shave your legs or wipe take your leg a load there. off or... Um, exactly yeah. that. Yeah, and it's, it's not even from my age Sit perspective. And <laughs> yeah. And it, it can still look stylish, so why not put it in just in case? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a, a taller toilet seat is, you know, probably a good idea. So on the taller toilet seat, so um, you have, we obviously have like standard heights and you probably notice that when you do go into an over height toilet, it's really accommodating for those like with, you know, those aching, um, aching joints, um, but also if you're quite tall, it's essentially 30 millimeters taller, uh, higher, which doesn't feel like a lot, but it makes a huge difference, especially when you're kind of getting up and down quite a lot. So I would certainly look into, um, recommend looking into an over height toilet. If, if you kind of plan on being in the space, you know, maybe not, 10, 15, 20 years, just they're, they're the things to really think about. And even little things like underfloor heating, you know, like it's not an expensive thing to put underfloor heating in and it makes such a difference to, you know, your, how your bones feel. <laughs> I get out the shower, I don't have underfloor heating and it's so cold. Um, so little things like that will from a functionality perspective, because if you're popping it underneath your, um, your shower, it means like it dries up the shower quicker so it prevents mold. So they're like the, whilst it's a beautiful like luxury to have, um, it's actually really practical. But the thing is these days, who's designing a bathroom at the moment? Who's about to build anyone? Yep. So my best piece of advice, and you can thank me later, is put underfloor heating in your wet areas. It will cost $1,000 a room. That's all. It's not even $1,000 a room. And even room. if you're worried about the cost of running it, let's face it, it's really only on during winter, but you don't have to have it on. At least it's there for potential resale value or because, I mean, to say you've got underfloor heating, people are like, oh, wow, but they don't, don't actually realise how affordable. It's, it's so affordable. And it is, once you have it, ugh, yep. oh, yeah. Hero products. So Hero products is something that I think each and every single one of you will kind of go through that in the, pro in the process, like that moment of I have to have whatever it may be. And I think planning around Hero products are really integral. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on how, do you, how to best plan for, for your Hero product moments. Yeah, I mean, your Hero product is generally going to be something that you spend a lot of money on and it's that thing that you might sacrifice elsewhere to get that product, whether it's a beautiful freestanding bath or... A, gorgeous cabinet tree. Just make sure it's the focal point of the room. You're spending the money and it does, it actually needs to be the hero. So whether it's as you walk in, you've got your bath centered and it's highlighted and that's the first thing that you notice. I mean, we, d we did this one here on the left. That was our Albert Park project. And I guess the double shower heads as well as the double vanities are probably, you know, kind of on par with each other, they, you, you notice them both as you walk through the door. So I guess it doesn't have to just be one hero product. Mm. Look, if you can have two or three, go for it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely that thing that you walk in the room and you're like, you know, that statement piece, isn't it? Th that wow, like when people say like, this is amazing, like but I not, wanna live here. Not just visually amazing as well, like practicality mm. amazing, you know. Alyssa and Lissandra have recently um, concluded their build of an Albert Park in Melbourne and it's a stunning terrace um, home. You, you were building, you were building to sell. Yes, we so were. It was a flip. It was a flip. And a flip is a very different, it's a very different um, story and mindset. But even like if you're planning on selling in the next like five years, you've got to kind of approach things a little bit differently. You do. I mean, it just happened to be that everything that we designed in this space to sell, we would love. Totally. But we were building an Albert Park, so obviously we had to consider the area, the type of person, the pro you know, your professional family poten potentially. Um, so we, we knew our buyer. We knew, obviously, what the bells and whistles that they wanted, but we also understood that we had to give it a sense of luxury, but also 
not be polarizing either. So it definitely, if you are designing um, to sell, pick things that make a wow factor, but not things that are so polarizing, AKA a certain pattern tile that you might like, um, and plaster it over every wall because you like it. You really have to consider the, the general population. And that's, yeah, number one. You can always add in with the accessories, but keep it, I know this isn't keeping it simple, so I'm kind of like <laughs> contradicting myself, but if you know the market, build to that. I really wanted to um, kind of pick your brains around creating, um, designing a room and like from a layout perspective. I think we talked about it from, um, from the, the perspective of master on suite, but really go into the tips and tricks and that being like talking to trades Lighting, measurements, layout. You ladies have been... How many bathrooms have you created now? Probably 20? 20? Yeah. Because talking to trades is a whole new game. I'm not sure if... I... And probably the worst part of the whole building experience. And if some of you have started, you probably know what I'm talking about. That will be the hardest thing about so what would you, building. Yeah, so in terms of communicating, what, what would you best recommend how to communicate to your trades? Look, I think, I think the best way is to obviously have a really good idea of your vision yeah. and then once you do have that vision, sit down with them and sit down with your electrician, your plumber, your, build, like your carpenter, every single trade. It's not just a matter of if you have a builder working for you who's taking care of, don't let him take care of it all. Like You need to be in control of talking to every single one of your trades and making sure they understand because, I mean, even with, even with our experience, we're never going to do a build that is 100% without complications. Um, but what you have to do is try and sit down and all make sure that you're on the same page and if they don't understand anything and make sure you're there every step of the way, but making sure that they're doing what they're meant to be doing. And going on from that as well don't don't let them decide what height you want your nib wall don't let them decide what height you want your vanity if you're unsure talk about it with them because plumbers they'll put it wherever they think and that might be too low for you and they've all got different ideas so at positioning of taps every little detail that you can think of make sure that you're over discuss it with them and just don't let them decide anything without running it by you guys and the, the other thing as well is like lighting plans really talk about go through that with your electrician because they're more than likely just to bang a light there and a light there so do your research find out what you want and hold their hand with it it's not you know telling them how to suck eggs it's just you being honest with their, your expectations about what and you want. And it's your bathroom. Yeah, so exactly. that, you, you've got to live with it every single day. So um, we, we really recommend having that kind of pre, the pre-meeting. So essentially you, you kind of, you have, you have your trades in the room and you just kind of talk through all the details because the details are what's going to make a huge difference. No, well, an architect normally, fo well. An interior designer an will interior do that designer for you. Would. Yeah, yeah, an architect normally does the, the plans and then it definitely a designer. You think it might not be important, but it is really important to get all of that stuff right. Especially if this is like you kind of forever home and it's like, you know, maybe a little bit different if it's your first home and you only plan to be there for five years. You might have a bit of a different approach. Do you know my biggest piece of advice for anybody that's wanting to build a home that they want to live in is go and spend the money on a designer because it will actually save you money in the long run. You'll make way less mistakes and you'll be so much happier in the end. Even if it's a two hour consult, it doesn't have to be they're, they're managing the whole project. Just go and talk to them for two hours. If you've, if you've got an idea in your head and you need somebody to bounce ideas, they'll be able to help you. That validation. Yeah. The last thing on this, I want to talk about the, um, we talked about like the, the height of the of taps. Positioning of the toilet roll holder. <laughs> I don't think we, I don't think we put enough um, emphasis on position and thought into that. But if you think about it, it's so integral. And if you think about like putting it behind here, no, no. But so that comes down to the layout. 
totally. making sure you've got a wall there to put a toilet roll holder on. Exactly, exactly that. So just those small things, your towel rails, all of those, um, they make a big difference and it avoids any kind of confusion and clutter on your vanity. If, um, and, and little things, making sure that your towel rail's close to your, your shower so you're not traipsing. A... Desperate times that would be, if you didn't. <laughs> hey, you see it a lot though. You see the towel rail behind the door and it's like, Ooh. We're going to talk about some new materials and I guess um, materials to, that are really paving, paving the way and a lot, of, a lot of which I think we've just kind of picked up from, um, you know, Albert Park because you gals are paving the way. But can we talk about solid surface and I guess what, what really attracted you to solid surface in the bathroom? Yeah, I think, I think it was an easy pick when we were picking out. So this is the, the Kato Lucy bath and basin. Um, and I think gone are the days where you had to have shiny chrome, shiny porcelain, shiny bath. And I think for a while there, solid, people were put off by solid surfaces because they're, they are hard to clean, but not this range. Mm. You get a full cleaning kit and I just think it's, um, it's so soft and it certainly creates a mood as soon as, as, soon as you walk into it's that space. It's very tactile, isn't it? You yeah. want to touch it, you want to yeah. kind of engage with it. And then I think bring fashion to the bathroom and, and I guess fa fashion's a, a funny word, especially when you put it in the context of a bathroom, but how you can have those signature moments, I think um, from a furniture perspective is, is really kind of a cool thing to do. So here we've got the Izzy Halo, but we've also got the Kato new behind us and essentially really we're, we're seeing a lot of pleating coming into the bathroom and how that can just have really an elevated space. Say no more about it from you guys, or? <laughs> oh, I mean, this is my favourite vanity. I just, I love it. I think it's, um, as soon as you bring a dimension into a space, I think for so long we've seen the shiny tiles and it's all just been one dimensional, but we're so fortunate now with all the products out on the markets. And, and vanities used to just be plain white laminate, so boring, but now they really can become a focal piece in your bathroom. <laughs> And it's just so exciting that you can walk into a space and it can evoke so much, like so many emotions. That, that bathroom in particular, when you walked into it, it was just this sense of calmness. And, mm. and that's because there was all different textures in that, in that area. So, Sam, I'm going to question. I'm about to do my bathroom and it's, going to, it's the family bathroom. And I'm wondering, it's not huge, what about a shower over a bath? Great question. Yeah. Because if, we've had this. Yes. Yeah. We've made this mistake mis before. We when have we were made rookies. this mistake. It is important to have a bath in your main bathroom. Mm. If you have to, put your shower over your main bath, uh, over your bath. We we made a mistake yeah. on fans versus phase where we had a small space but we were adamant that I had to have a bath, so we squeezed it in. And it's the one thing that's kind of always bugged me, even like six years on, just thinking, oh, if I had that chance again, if I had that chance again, we would have opted for that option because that option would have been better than what we ended up with. Hi, thank you, ladies. Um, my question's related to that, but I think you've just answered it. So we're doing two bathrooms, the main bathroom, which is tiny, and then our ensuite, which is huge. <laughs> Well, we have the bath with the shower over it. Yeah. And we're thinking, we've got three boys and they need as much space as possible. Yeah. Is it okay to get rid of the bath tub from there and just at least have it somewhere in the house, but in our big Absolutely, yeah, I would be doing yeah. that. Okay. Because if you sell down the track and, and it is a small main bathroom and you don't want to compromise on the size because you do plan on staying there for a little bit, which yeah. is what you need to take into consideration at least there's a bath in the house. If you were saying pull it out completely and don't put a bath in the ensuite, we would say no, mm -hmm. find a spot yep. for it. And to be honest, your boys are probably now of that age where they're probably not ever going to have a bath. Well, no. not never not, but yep. the majority of the time, I mean, I've got a seven and a nine year old and they're in the shower 99% of the time. You know, it's kind of more when they're a bit younger that you kind of need that bath. So in that instance, your boys will probably get a lot more. They'll find, that bathroom way more functional by just having the shower. I'm renovating a house down in Melbourne at the moment and our main bathroom is quite small also. 
Just wondering, we've got room to put a small bath and a separate shower. Would you go that way or would you have the larger bath with the overhead shower? Oh, I, I would probably go small bath and separate shower. How, how big is the shower? Is it 900 by 900? Or yeah, is it big? standard size. And then the bath is like 1500 or something, is it? Uh, yeah, it's 1500. So it's, it is small and that's your main bathroom. I mean, it's a little bit hard to say 100% without seeing the space, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you're still able to achieve a standard size shower and a standard size bath, then like that's better than nothing. Yeah, I would probably do that too. No worries. Yeah. And Thank I think you. from a, um, if you were to sell your house in the like next five or ten years, people would probably look at it more favourably if if you were in fact um, had had the two separated because sometimes a shower over bath can be a little, quite polarising for some. I, I think know, it goes back to what you're saying. It depends yeah. on the user, doesn't it? Exactly. Like who's looking at the space. At the moment, I've got a shower tree with pipes in a wall, and it's a single brick wall between two rooms. And I'd ideally like to change it to the other side of the room. Is that possible? I think it's, it's probably certainly possible. It's something that you probably need to engage a plumber with because it would mean that you'd have to move your, I guess, your fixings on the wall. So anything, anything is possible. Yeah, <laughs> you just need to engage the right people. And in that instance, that would be a plumber. And then, you know, the cost as well. But yeah. they might be able to feed it up through the ceiling. So it might not be that big a cost. I've, I've used that with a builder before where he's told me it's very difficult and I've said, but is it possible? And he's going, yeah, yes. I, uh, <laughs> and and some, you can make anything happen. And some tradies will be like, yep, yeah, we can do this. Some will be like, nah, it's too hard. So maybe get a couple of opinions as well. Thank you. I'm a Perth girl and I grew up that we would never have a toilet in a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> is that a space I'm with thing? you. Why the hell? When I'm, people have space, I know. would you put a toilet? I don't know. I don't is get it, it. Is it an east-west divide? Do you know Can what? Can anyone explain? It's a, well, it's generally a space thing. Even though you don't need that much space in a toilet, we didn't have an option in Albert Park. If we could have put that toilet in a separate little, you know, even a 1,200 separate powder room. We, we did wouldn't. have another powder room though, so for us it wasn't a massive concern because there were four, three other, we had four toilets in that place. So it wasn't a huge concern, but yeah. If you've uh, got the space. It's generally a space thing. Keep the toilet away from the main bathroom. Yep. Um, just one of your pictures there, the Albert Park bathroom there. Yeah. The bathtub inside the wet area. Was that actually really hard to accomplish? This drainage, getting wet behind the bar. No, it, it wasn't. Only, I mean, we did have. See a, this drain here, this strip drain here. We had a strip drain yeah. from end to end. So the ground was slanting towards under yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, and obviously we had a confident Tyler yeah. who knew what he was doing and a, a plumber a as well of, that knew what that was yeah. doing. And a lot of builders kind of will Don't deter like you from that because it's slant. a lot of hard work for them. But at, at the end of the day, if it's something that you kind of want to achieve, then it's achievable. Yeah. All right, well, my last one is, what is your favorite part of the bathroom process? Oh, look, it would have, well, in Albert Park, it was coming into Reese bathrooms and selecting Always. all the beautiful, I mean, when you've got, I think gone are the days where you actually didn't have a select, like any choice. So it was fairly easy. Now, when you go into Reese bathrooms, it's like a day that you have to actually book out because there are so many beautiful products and you can play on the spot as well. That's what I like. You've got all the samples and yeah, that's but you the know, best part. You know the and really good come thing. together. So, you know, going back to that, if you guys are planning, I, you have to do this. Go on to the Reefs website. It's the 3D planner. But so what, it will give you a, a, a mud map of the space. So you put in all your space, like three meters by three meters, um, the height of your ceilings, where your doors are. So you drop in the products, any product that Reese has, and but you can turn it into a render. And so you can pick kind of basic tiles and all of that, but you turn it into a render. So you get to actually see what your space, your, what your bathroom is going to look like with the specific products that you've selected. It's not 
So the, it is no guessing game. It literally is. Like these are the we we present these renders to our clients because the, I mean we use other programs, but. It's the most it real. just helps you bring the space to life and it's something that you actually don't have to embark on on your own. And it's we fun. Can, it's can actually really you. fun playing around with that. And even if you're like, that doesn't feel right to me, then you click and drag the toilet over here to the bath, you know, and you swap it around and it's literally like that instead of getting your, you know, your pen and scribbling that out. I guess most people come up and they say, I don't have a vision. I can't picture things. Well, if you do it this way, you can. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. And thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for um, yeah, spending your Thursday night with us. Yeah. It's been really great. Thank you.